All right, and welcome back. Um, the governor of Kisumu, our host governor, is already here in studio. And uh, the, you have it. Uh, when we started before, you know, the governor was also wondering the kind of scenery we have, you know, with the hippos just behind us here. Mm -hmm. uh, they're basking in the sun. But the question is, they are in water, but they're basking in the sun. Science. We'll answer that question later on. Okay. But before then, Governor, allow me to take you very quickly through the front pages of our local dailies, as usually, as we always do it. Um, let me start with a copy of the Star newspaper. What do we have on the front page of the Star? Ruto raids ODM as Raila plots a fight back. Ruto raids ODM as as Raila plots fight back there is that issue of disloyalty is part of the agenda at retreat to be held in Machakos from Thursday that is there on the front page you also have members of ODM who met President William Ruto yesterday in uh, State House a number of them uh, including CS Walo we have got uh, Felix Odor uh, Mark Yamita etc etc what is cooking that is also on the front page of the star newspaper and on the front page of the daily nation quite different the rogue judge that is also on the front page the rogue judge he wanted his take in land deal paid in dollars or dirhams will how are we talking about Justice Chitembwe, who now the president has got 10 days to make that determination whether he'll be kicked out of the judiciary as was proposed by the JSC report. He's been facing issues over and over again, even for a judge who shot the global infamy in 2017 when he was awarded the golden bludgeon from the world judgment in the world justice. Side Chituma Chitembe still had everything going on for him, but right now the president has only 10 days to decide his fate matters career. All right. And finally, what do we have on the front page of the standard? Radical proposals to jolt education sector. Radical proposals to jolt education sector. Um, among proposals, the presidential working party on education reforms want is to stream the powers of TSC. The team is also suggesting mergers of universities as well as review of integrate to teaching colleges. That is also the front page of the standard. But good to mention that we also have that bit of uh, Justice Chitembe. How Justice Chitembe dug beat that buried plum career. You can take a look at your local daily for more and that. That is what you have on the front page of our local dailies. And now we have got our host governor, Professor Peter Anyang Nyongo in studio. Governor, welcome to our set. Our set. Thank you very much. Morning. Thank you very much. Good morning. Good welcome to Kisumu. Thank you so much. Before we started so the show, Before you also marveled at the site that we've also been marveling yeah. throughout the morning since around 6 in the morning. The heap was basking in the sun. In the, in the sun. And they look like stones. And they look like stones. Actually, <laughs> even my, our <laughs> cameraman was wondering, is that a bit of stone or hyacinth or something? But the hippos. Well, you know, well, you know, from here you can't understand why they are there. But if you are there, you would understand because the sun is hitting the water. Yes. And you know, they have been under the water all this while, down there, which is very cold. Mm -hmm. When they come to the top and the sun is hitting the water, it's very warm. So they will not move ah, yeah. so long as the warmth that they're receiving is there. Yes. You see, they are very economical with their time, you know. Mm. They come out, the spot where the sun is hitting the water, and, and they stay there. They disappear. They disappear. They just sink down when they have had enough. Governor, this only gives that a different picture of Kisumu, that a picture that people do not understand about yes. Kisumu as a county. Yes. You are the host governor. You are the governor of this particular county. What are some of, the, some of these things that people do not understand about Kisumu? But you said that, hmm, I wish someone from somewhere would have known about Kisumu County. I mean, County. I mean, one of the things people don't know about Kisumu, but some do, of course, is the calmness of the place. The manner in which you can come here and just rest and mm. chill and take it easy. Because the, for example, look at the yacht club. How many such clubs do you know? Exactly. Around here. Yeah. If you go to Mombasa, you'll find some things like this on the, on the ocean. But you have to go to Mombasa. Mm. 
And therefore, there are only two places in Kenya where you can have fine kind of this kind of atmosphere. That is Kisumu and Mombasa. I'm quite sure that maybe around Mount Kenya, yes, you, you but not with as much expanse of water mm. as the at the at the coast and the lake shore. Yes. So I I think this is an aspect of Kisumu that that is going to grow as we open up the lakefront mm. through the lakefront development cooperation work that is going on. And if when and if the World Bank uh, project that was building a ring road around the Lake Victoria yes. is done, that will even provide much more opportunities for facilities to come around the lake which offer atmospheres like this. Mm -hmm. So I, I do believe that we are on the right course and I do believe that within the next five years yeah. you are going to see more of this. But well, it is long overdue, but that's why we're embarking, but that's why we're embarking on and it. Actually, and cool. actually, if you go to the west where we are, along that shore of the lake, yes, uh, you'll find that uh, quite a number of resorts are coming up, mm. which I've already stayed in one of them, mm. Villa del Sol. You better go there. Villa del Sol is a very beautiful place. Yes. And after you pass Villa, Villa del Sol, there are many others going towards Caloca Beach. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Come back to your development agenda because now it's almost 150 days into office or the second term. You went to the residents of Kisumu, to the electorate, and they voted you back to serve your, your second term, which you are privileged enough to yeah. take that. Um, what have you so far achieved within you no? Know, 150 or so days since you embarked on your second term in office. Well, in office. well, we have done a lot within the 150 days. Some of them, most of them are in agriculture actually, apart from uh, having this fantastic relations with United Green, which is a British company yes. coming to invest about 31 billion shillings here. That is going to be a an, an huge injection in the agricultural sector. But apart from that, we have uh, started the operation of the tomato plant mm -hmm. at, at Kuchien in, in Kano. And the animal reproduction center in Chemelil is going on very well. And we have a lot of irrigation projects in the Nyakach Kano area to revive, uh, to continue reviving production of, of, of rice and, and other crops. Yes. But much more important is that we manage finally to bring in a 30 million rice milling plant in, in uh, the Hero Irrigation Scheme, mm. uh, where the National Irrigation Board has its facilities, that 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 uh, rice meal is going to make a lot of difference to rice in terms of value addition. Mm. So far, you know, Ugandan traders have been coming to the rice belt and buying rice without any value addition. Mm. So the, it's they who are enjoying the value addition and not us. So now we are going to mill our own rice here with a very big rice mill that we have bought mm. by the county. And once it starts operations, it's a game changer. Yeah. yeah. And Governor, that's about the project nobody would easily understand or know unless they're highlighted. When you talk about Uganda um, getting into the business aspect with Kisumu County, how much is going to be the turnover, uh, ultimately, giving think, a projection of five years? I think it's big. I think it's big. I mean, I think it's really big because if you consider that there are only two places producing rice yes. in large quantities in Kenya, that is Moya and Ahero. And Ahero rice is really preferred because of its taste. Mm -hmm. We have a huge market. And other rice come from Uganda, I mean Tanzania, and of course some people import rice from Pakistan, as far as Pakistan. Mm -hmm. But once we increase production ten times, we are going to have a lot of import substitution in, in, in Kenya with rice from Mahero. But another thing we've done which is very innovative is to establish the zipline drone yeah. company. Yeah. Now people don't understand zipline. Zipline is a way a company that we negotiated with when we went to Uganda along with my car, the governors from the Lake Region Economic mm -hmm. Block to help transport veterinary products and agricultural products to use us. Yes. For example, we have this animal reproduction center in Chemele where people are expected to take their cows mm. for to be artificially inseminated to have higher breeds so that from your ordinary zebu cows mm. You then are uh, artificially, the cows are then artificially inseminated by bulls of higher grade and value, and then you, pr you improve the value of your herd. Yes. Now, rather than transporting your cattle there, Zipline will be able to drop the semen mm. in your farm mm. and the artificial insemination done on spot that you don't.
waste your time going there, yes. which is quite a problem. Mm. But also another thing is, which is going on at the moment too, is that sometimes we need to drop medical products to dispensaries, health centers, and so on, away from Kisumu, rather than put them in a truck or a van or whatever, or a motorbike yeah. to take them, which takes time. You use zipline drones to drop the product. And this there. is a new innovation. Very new. I mean, there are only two, two three such other uh, uh, drone facilities in Africa, in, in Rwanda, in, in Ghana, in Nigeria. Mm. So we are the fourth. Okay. Yeah, Let's talk about um, It's quite close to the heart of people as well. Um, the government through, you know, the national government, health is part of the devolved functions. And uh, you are doing a lot in terms of uh, devolving and taking to the sub-counties. What is the progress so far? The progress is, is, is good. It's, it's, it's good. But I think we are determined to do more. As you know, health health delivery systems mm. is a function of county governments. Mm. The government, the national government, also makes policies and training and all that. But when it comes to where the rubber touches the ground, particularly yes. primary and, 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 and uh, primary family and public health care, that is the work of the counties. Okay. Mm. So it means that we have to develop tremendous capacity at the village level mm. to ensure that the health of our people is improved. And part of the health, quite a good part of the health, is nutrition and environment. If people don't have good nutrition, of course, they're going to jeopardize their health. Yeah. If don't, they don't live in a clean environment, there's another problem. So we are tackling those th <coughs> the health issue in a three... Sorry. Sorry. <coughs> break we are still having this discussion with uh, professor Anyang Nyongo the governor of county as we do this we are also marveling at the view of uh, Lake Victoria someone who's never been here for quite a long time would easily tell that Kisumu is not beautiful Kisumu is beautiful we are just right just a few meters you know from the water from the water yeah. so we are lucky enough all right governor talking about matters health and how close it is because the primary health is where a majority of Kenyans depend on fast. Yeah. When? When first is to develop level one and level two hospitals mm -hmm. or facilities, dispensaries and health centers. Mm -hmm. Some health centers are level three. At that point in time, we really rely on community health workers. Yes. These are civilians, mainly women, but some Taman men, who are trained in basic health care, mm -hmm. particularly family health. Family health means that a uh, community health worker must have a record of mm. families in, in this family, in their area of jurisdiction. Mm -hmm. It is a long-term process because it is not something you force on people, it's, a, it's something you persuade people to join so that the public health system can help them prevent some diseases through vaccination. Now you know that um, uh, we usually think of vaccination only in terms of pandemics. No. Vaccination should be something that is undertaken in terms of prevention mm. or possible diseases. I'll give you an example. Young girls entering puberty yes. and not, not yet experiencing sexual contact mm. with boys or men. Now, they must be taught how to take care of themselves, particularly when they begin having their menstrual monthly periods, okay? There is something called human papilloma virus, which girls and women get. Uh, that human papilloma virus, it can be vaccinated against because yeah. it is a precursor to possible cervical cancer. Now, this is something that only community health workers who are women can do in educating families about vaccinating young girls against human papilloma virus. Mm. Now, at the moment, it's a very serious matter because teenage pregnancy is becoming very prevalent yes. in Kenya mm. and interferes with girls' education. Recently, when we were giving scholarships in Tomboya Labor College, bursaries and scholarship Kenya Commercial Bank, mm. I was shocked to find a girl who was getting a scholarship to go to high school who was 11 years old and had already had a child. 
Yeah. You, you understand this is a very serious matter. Yeah. So we as county governments have an enormous responsibility to deal with this kind of thing, let alone dealing with things like HIV, AIDS and so on, and non-communicable diseases or cancers and so on. There are some basic public health and family health issues that we must confront. Absolutely. You see. And that is why when we in the county government said that we should get enough money that we need from the from the revenue bill. Okay. The Vasiari. I mean it is not because we want to misuse that money, it's because that money is needed for very basic health care provision mm. in our societies so that we de- live in a healthy, strong and productive nation. That's one. Secondly, uh, in terms of health again, if you don't have access roads in the rural areas and somebody accidentally falls sick and even a motorbike cannot reach that home, you, remember, you realize you're not doing a very good thing to your people. Absolutely. Because people don't build their own roads. Roads are communal things. Mm-hmm. Access roads are communal things. Therefore, when we establish village administrations, village councils and so on, mm-hmm. we give them five fundamental responsibilities. One over access roads, the other one over environment, the other one over provision water, the fourth one is health, and the fifth one is agriculture. Mm-hmm. Because in the old days, for example, each family had a little garden behind the kitchen yes. producing basic commodities like vegetables, b- b- tubers, oh, yeah. and what not. Yeah. And then you have a, one or two dairy cows where you got milk. That was tradition when I grew up. Mm. That was a typical feature of every rural home. Now we understand that in those days, without very extensive health care, bad health was a very rare thing. Yes. I remember growing up. It was a very rare thing, except for malaria, a few other things. But because population has increased, because population uh, pollution has entered even rural areas, you find diseases that never existed before, terrorizing communities in rural areas. Yes. Now we must work very hard to roll the ball back okay. and make sure that we approximate as much as possible. That very, that very what I call fresh yes. kind of communities that we had in those old days. I'm not saying that we travel backwards, but we use modernity mm. to create a healthy environment, healthy systems for people to Absolutely. live in. Absolutely. And Governor, still on the map, belongs to the Lake Region Economic Block. And I believe that as a county, you had your mandate because each and every county had their mandate on whatever they were supposed to do to contribute to the LRE. But then, one thing that is quite important matters health. We don't have a, a big referral hospital. A majority of patients still tend to go to uh, to 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 Eldoret. That is that is not true. Right? That is not true, mm. by the way. Mm. That's that's a fallacy. They have a big referral also. Yes, there are more. And you only know, you know go, need to go there and find that we receive patients from all over mm. in Jaramogi, even from Uganda and Sudan. What is the current uptake? What is the current uptake? I don't know exactly. I don't know exact figures, but it's pretty big. I mean, you go to Jaramogi, find full all the time. If anything, we are expanding. Yes, we are expanding. If you go there, you find that we are being, building a big cancer comprehensive. Cancer Care Center. We, are we are expanding the surgical uh, wards. We are expanding the, 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 the wards to do neurological problems. Mm. We have been, unfortunately for me, but it is necessary, <laughs> we have built a new resting home, I yeah. mean, for the dead, you see what I mean? Uh, because along with treating people, there is also the tragedy of losing people. Yeah. Uh, and since we have a big clientele from around the region, mm. we have to expand facilities. Mm. Uh, and sometimes, of course, there are certain services that are available only in Moe Teaching Array for Hospitals. Like Moe Teaching Array for Hospitals so far has been leading in cancer treatment. It was a regional protocol mm. for cancer. But that is why we are expanding our comp- comprehensive cancer care center mm. because of the demand for uh, prevention of cancer and for treatment of cancer. Mm. The other thing that... Do you have an oncology center in, at the referral hospital? Cancer in, <laughs> means oncology. partly yes. oncology, you yes. see what I mean? Exactly. Um, you see, the point is that it is not just the physical facility you need, mm. you need the human resources. 
In order to have a comprehensive the cancer center, you need oncologists of various kinds, Absolutely. by the way, right. because there are those people who are specialized in prostate cancer, some specialized in breast cancer, and so on. So when you are a training oncologist, you must also be ready to know that you are going to be trained specialization within, within oncology. Yeah. Then you have to have medical physicists who are very necessary in, in, in oncology. Those people who plan how you, for example, you're going to have radiation, mm -hmm. then you have cancer nurses. So there's a whole lot of specialities in the cancer space in terms of human resources mm -hmm. that you need to have a proper comprehensive cancer care center. Unfortunately, we have never invested enough in cancer treatment. I remember when I was Minister of Medical Services, right. it's one of the things that I observed and started fighting very hard for, for the expansion of, 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 of experts in cancer. Mm -hmm. And that is what led partly that, that quest. We worked very closely with Olive Muganda. Mm -hmm. Um, for the established comprehensive cancer Absolutely. care center and so governor still on health and university mm -hmm. the issue because we are in the in, in the you know lake region belt which yeah. is quite prevalence malaria prevalence is here and the hiv prevalence how what have you done in as, as a government to eradicate the two you know menaces we have malaria and hiv you can't really i don't think you can. really i don't think you can eradicate malaria that easily Prevention of course more than to reduce the reduction yes. yes that's why i'm telling you the environment is important the stagnant water is an invitation to have mosquitoes who will finally bite you and give you malaria. Yeah. So eliminate stagnant waters in, in the villages. Make sure that you don't have too many surfaces with water, sallow, dirty and so on, mm. that can breed mosquitoes, okay? And, and then advise people to sleep under bed nets, okay? Bed nets will help very much, especially young people, to, to avoid getting malaria. And thirdly, uh, there's a vaccination for malaria, but it's not very prevalent. I don't know why. So if malaria, unfortunately, visits you, <laughs> then you have to have drugs to yeah. treat it. Yeah. Uh, and I think the incidence of malaria has gone down considerably in this region. I don't think it is as prevalent as... There was a peak, I think, some time ago, where malaria was very, very prevalent in the region. But there are certain seasons, like rainy seasons and so on, yes. when you get more incidences of malaria. But what we are saying in Kisumu County, prevent it. Prevent. Fight the war for preventing malaria more than fighting the war for curing it. Mm. Because if we prevent it, you don't need to spend too much money curing it. Okay. Yeah. Governor Matas Agriculture. We, you know, Nyanza as, as a region is, is a county that, you know, can sustain itself. Agriculturally, and a majority of people uh, depend on whatever the little they have from their shamba to sustain themselves. But let's talk about the large scale. What's you know the, the, the black gold or the white gold, the rice in Ahero? You talked about rice. Whenever it is seasonal, a majority of those people do not get time to plant. Somebody would argue that perhaps the county government, in conjunction with other developer, development partners, can also come up with a dam that is also done somewhere in uh, in, in Moya to help them irrigate. Well, the good news is the, yes. uh, is the yes. Chorus for in multipurpose dam, mm -hmm. which has been in the work since 1951, by the way. Right. It was even planned by a colonial government. The Chorus for in multipurpose dam is finally being done. It's finally being done. It's finally, the work is going on, okay. everything's going on, and the one good thing is Chorus for in multipurpose dam, you will not believe it, but it will have effect up to Riyadh Hill here in Kisumu. It has about 10 holding tanks, as it were, along the way. From Kuru Soin itself, mm -hmm. from the Soin Valley, and up to here. And it's going to, uh, co it has to control the flows of the river Nyando. Yes. So the river Nyando doesn't misbehave, mm -hmm. <laughs> flood, mm -hmm. flood the place uh, un unnecessarily when it rains. Yes. It's going to contain that water and make sure that the water is used for irrigation mm -hmm. and as well as for drinking water. So the Kuru Soin's multipurpose dam is going to be a game changer. In, in, in the Nyando Valley. Like? What is the timeline? It is going on now. The work is going on. Okay. So I believe that within a year or two, work will be complete. Okay. Yeah. The issue of, you know, at the end of the day, when yeah. we're running, we have, you know, transport. Yeah. And you're lucky enough that you have got an international airport here. How have you made use of it? How is it now contributing to the growth of Kisumu County? I mean, when I became, I mean, when I became governor, there were not about two planes. There were three. There was Kenya Airways Jumbo Jet, and the frequency was not that high. Mm. And then came uh, Silverstone. Mm -hmm. uh, Silverstone, of course, 
disappeared. It started to emerge at 748 or yes. something like that. Yeah. And then Safari Link came, and now 748 came, and then Renegade came. Mm. So I have seen during my, my, my time as governor the increase of air transport here go up about fivefold. So the passengers, um, I understand, has yeah. gone up uh, exponentially mm. and will continue to grow. We, we, when we were holding a free cities convention here in May last year, we pushed very much with the Kenya Airports Authority to make this airport truly international by having an arrival, extra arrival space and extra uh, departure space. And that was done. Yes. And now the, the, the arrival space we are still waiting for the belt, conveyor belt for luggage to be completed. Otherwise, when the conveyor belt is completed, we expect that we can get planes coming from Addis Ababa stopping here and taking off here. Mind you, Kisumu Airport is the most cost-effective airport to land in and take off in because of the attitude. Because of the attitude. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, it is comparatively much better than Eldred, than even Embakasi in, the, in that regard. In fact, in the old days, because of the lake, the, the hydro float, the, the planes that used to land on water used to land here on their way to Johannesburg. In fact, when the royal family, I think Queen, Queen, the President Queen Elizabeth and Princess Margaret came here to Kisumu, they, you, they used uh, those, those planes to get mm -hmm. here. So, so Kisumu is known internationally as an international airport yeah. since colonial times. We should build on this fame and make sure that it truly becomes international in terms of air traffic, commerce and industry in the region. Mm -hmm. I do believe that uh, be, be the revival of the port and uh, now maritime transport between us and our neighboring countries going on uh, progressively, that the airport too will be also increase its activities mm -hmm. progressively. Absolutely. What are you doing in terms of the, extending the, 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 the SGR, SGR the from where it is right from now to Sum? I, 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 I'm right, the wrong person knows what I'm doing, but what I wish to be done exactly. is that this year reaches Kisumu, and that was the original intention. Why I didn't reach Kisumu, I don't want to go into because the national government should answer that question. Mm -hmm. But I think the intention it still is that the SGR, SGR will come to Kisumu, it will continue to Bosia, it will connect with the Uganda SGR yeah. into Rwanda, Burundi, and the DRC. Mm. Governor, you know, when you talk about matters transport, finally, you know, the port already has, you know, the oil being transported to the Arabian count country, yeah, Uganda. Yeah. Um, initially, it never used to happen. What is the progress well, to this far? Well, it did happen. It did happen until 1978. And then it also When the community collapsed. Maybe you are too young to know that. <laughs> <laughs> but 78, the, the SGA collapsed when I was teaching at the University of Nairobi. Right. It was a traumatic experience because I knew the, the minister for East African community, uh, the late Robert Uko, was a good friend of mine. And I remember we were having a drink at Quality Hotel in Kisumu, in Nairobi, when he told us the tribulation of the East African community as it was collapsing. Mm -hmm. But that's now his now, look, the thing is that it is in the interest of Kenya for the history year to connect with Uganda. Mm -hmm. It's really the interest of Kenya. Because, you see, Uganda has a huge uh, market here in Kenya in terms of importing things from Kenya. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it is for us to make sure that we are aggressive in being uh, leading partners in the East African community. It is in our interest, mm -hmm. I must say. So that the the growth of the Kenyan economy is organically connected to the growth of the East African economies, up to DRC and South Sudan and all that. And Kenya, happily, has been the epicenter of modernization in this part of the world and economic growth. Mm. We must build on that comparative advantage by being aggressive on building infrastructure in East Africa. So uh, I take it, <laughs> uh, like the Americans, we hold this truth to be self-evident, mm. <laughs> that Kenya should spur the growth in East Africa. Right. We hold it as self-evident, mm. and it's nothing that we can agree about. If anything is a truth, we should build on. Okay. I have a question here. Yes, what are you doing on the access roads? The, some of the access roads in Kisumu rural areas are not in good shape. Well... That's well, that's a phenomenon the whole Kenya over, but we're doing something about it. I mean, I wish he comes and I take him around on some of the access roads we have built, but we, we still are a long way to go to complete the job. Um, I, I, I was MP for, for Kisumu Rural, which is now semi and we did a lot, but we didn't have money for those roads. Mm. Now the county government has the money to do rural roads. The demand is enormous. 
the demand is enormous. Mm. What we have done now is to establish a wing in our roads department called called uh, uh, the machine-based road building system. In other words, we buy, buy the machines, like the, in the old colonial days of having the public works department, now we have our own public works department, right. where we don't need to hire a contractor, we have our people who go there, and when there's a necessity to build the road, we build it. Absolutely. Yeah. Now that's going on. Or we partner, at the moment we are partner with the National Youth Service, to build a tarmac road from Nambakapio mm -hmm. to Ndere Island, about 17 kilometers. You know, tarmac roads are very expensive, yeah. so we can't do many of them. But at least by being imaginative and innovative, we want to do that progressively. So we will finish that mm. within the next couple of months, mm. start another one somewhere else, so that we progressively come from t Maram roads to tarmac roads. We do Maram roads for access, but when we want to make them more permanent, then we go tarmac by the par partnership mm. with, with, with certain entities who have the capacity to do so. We bring the money and the equipment, mm. and they do it. All right. Yeah. And finally, Governor, some that Kisumu County is Kisumu County is rising as an investment destination of choice. What's the magic? And number two, do you have enough land for investors? Well, we do. Well, we do. Well, land is a problem because you know the municipalities and the county council really misuse land and misbehave. A lot of lands were grabbed, but we have worked in together with the Ministry of Lands, the yes. Department of Lands, National Department of Lands, the National Land Commission, and the Anti-Corruption Commission. We have a committee mm. that we have established that looks into the land that was grabbed and where we can get it back, we get it back and put it to the disposal of investors. For example, now we are having partnership with the Great Lakes University to establish a pharmaceutical firm at the Great Lakes University by a company from the U.S. called Mereditas. Right. They are going to have a pharmaceutical farm at the university in an area that is going to be a, a special economic zone and they are going to f produce pharmaceutical products mm. with the aim that in future we should have a pharmaceutical pharmacology fac faculty at the Great Lakes University. So we want to combine production with learning in that regard. So my editors are working with that. In fact, we just have been having meetings this week to establish from a pharmaceutical farm with the Great Lakes University. Mm. And then we acquired land there. Okay. We have to buy it ourselves. But also we are now working with the Special Economic Zone Authority to declare that area Special Economic Zone yes. for purposes of producing pharmaceutical products. Mm. Yes. And finally, Governor, this is now uh, close to my heart as well. Yeah. I'm an artist and uh, my sister Lupita is also an artist and <laughs> privileged enough that <laughs> at some point we shared a platform at the Leons. Asante, <laughs> what are you doing as, you know, through Lupita? Are you using Lupita to, you know, market Kisum? Well, I well, I don't want to do that, quite honestly, but she can volunteer to do that. And she did volunteer to do that when we had our free cities here. I mean, she couldn't come, but she sent a message, and she used her social media platform to, to advertise our free cities. Mm. That really helped to attract participants to come, and we got a record partly. I mean, she contributed partly. We got a record of 11,000 visitors, mm. participants. The biggest African cities convention held ever since it was established. Yeah. Uh, I think the Union of Cities and Local Government of Africa headquarters in Rabat has said so. And in that regard, we are going to have uh, an executive committee of UCLGA here, Africa, uh, in Kisumu in May, because the people who came loved Kisumu. They said the food was fantastic. So I must thank Sarova Hotels which provided the foods, yeah. uh, because that Kisumu food uh, is sung to me everywhere I go now. And people say, we want to come to Kisumu, particular food. And then those people who ate the fish yes. in Dunga. Yes. The Dunga fish is becoming an international brand, apparently. We, we, <laughs> have, we have to go there. <laughs> yes. before, we Governor, go. before we go. Finally, yeah. this one. Finally. As a journalist, we never have finally. Yeah. There is something happened, and I will be allowed to quote you, yeah. in terms of politics. And this happened in matters, uh, matter, uh, members of uh, this also captured on the front page of the Star newspaper. Yeah. There you have it. Ruto raids ODM as Raila plots a fight back. And if I can quote you as one of uh, what you said yesterday, and let me just put you there. Quote quickly, Director, I'm not surprised that an amalgam of self-seeking MPs went to State House without the blessing of a progressive party, the Orange Democratic Party. End of quote. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean you know, when you're in Parliament, you are taken to Parliament by a party. And you have to do something as, 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 as dramatic as that. You must inform your party leader. 
at least you must discuss it, but in leadership, you can't. You are not an autonomous person. I mean, when we were campaigning, we were campaigning for uh, six piece. Some of these people went to Parliament because of six piece, not because anybody knows them. I know some of them. If they were to come back by themselves, they wouldn't go. You see what I mean? So you must respect the party as a democratic institution. Mm. I was the founder member of ODM number six, by the way. And I know what pain we went through to establish ODM and to make it a vehicle for fighting for democracy and civil liberties in this country. And that means something. That's not something you take for granted. It's something that people have died for. So we don't just flippantly go there and disregard party leadership. No, that doesn't happen in democratic so society. No, going to stay they didn't. You show what uh, Philippe Tali said. And the party leadership consoles wherever it is. And we do. What I do as governor, when it comes to touching what is... Inter I would have to call my party leader and explain to him, look, we are intending to do this. Are we agreed? Say, yes, do this, do this, do this. Because, see, politics are struggle. Okay. It's not a dinner party. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Pressure on my ears here for us. They say that it's short and sweet. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. That is Governor Professor Peter Nyang Nyong of Kisumu County. We are coming to you live from um, here at a Yacht Club here in Kisumu. We've been talking matters, politics, and of course development. I wish we had enough time. You know, when you have Professor, you'll have a whole day to talk matters politics. That's where we end it. Thank you so much for being a part of this show. But right now, but now we're taking back to Broadcasting House in Nairobi for our normal programming. Good morning. <laughs>